you are developing a website and want to support user logins, you need a way to verify users' passwords. To do so, you'll need to store a database of login information on your website server, and it is of the utmost importance to protect it in an attack scenario. Perhaps the most obvious way to do this is to simply store a table of usernames and passwords in plain text, but this is a colossally bad idea. Any security breach would allow an attacker to see all of your users' passwords verbatim. Instead, your website could try to hide plain text passwords by encrypting them, but this is still not a safe solution. Encryption requires a key that the server uses to decode the encrypted password and verify a user login. Because of this, the key has to be available to the server and can be vulnerable as a result. The big question here is how to keep a hacker from gaining one piece of information that gives them access to every password in your database. The solution is to use a one-way function, like hashing. Hashing is a cryptographic technique that takes a plain text password and creates a random, fixed length string of characters. This string, called a hash, is stored by a website instead of a plain text or encrypted password. If this method is implemented, when a user tries to log in, the website will first hash the password that is entered. It will then retrieve the stored hash for that user. If the entered hash and the stored hash match, then the login is successful. This is significantly more secure than storing plain text or encrypted passwords because hash functions have something called pre-image resistance which basically means that it's extremely difficult to discover the input based solely on the output of a hash function. Even making the smallest change to an input completely changes the resulting string. In our case, it is nearly impossible to find the actual password which produces a hash stored in our database. So even if a hacker breaches the database, there is no easy way to get back to the original passwords other than just guessing possible inputs until one is found that matches a stored hash. Now even though hashes are one way, they are still vulnerable to an offline dictionary attack. An attacker can use known hashing algorithms and pre-compute the hash outputs for a dictionary of billions of common passwords. Then, should a database be compromised, the attacker only needs to compare the stored hashes to their pre-computed outputs to break all the accounts with weaker common passwords. Additionally, since a specific password will consistently produce the same hash, if two users have the same password, a hacker will likely be able to compromise both accounts, since the hashes will also be the same. To prevent this from happening, it is strongly recommended that websites use a method called salting when storing hashed passwords. This involves adding a randomly generated string of characters called a salt to each user's individual password before hashing and storing it. This added entropy reduces the efficacy of dictionary lookups. While a pre-computed table will contain the hashes for common passwords, it probably won't include those for salted hashes. The salt itself doesn't necessarily have to be secret. It just creates a data set of long and random passwords large enough that it makes any sort of dictionary attack infeasible. Salting also resolves the situation in which a hacker is able to compromise multiple accounts with the same password. Using individual randomly generated salts for each user results in unique hashes, so even if two users have the same password, their hashes will look completely different. Hashing and salting don't stop database breaches, but they take away what's most important to a hacker, time. By making the time cost of each guess extremely high, the hackers will be able to break fewer passwords, even with a lot of computing power. Choosing a slower hash, one that takes a long time to run, is of great importance. If it takes too much time to make individual guesses, it will deter hackers from wasting their resources on your database. Getting password storage right is very tricky, and lots of important websites have failed. Rather than implementing your own hashing program, you really should find a well-tested library that works within your framework. There are benefits to using a single sign-on alternative for your site by linking it to Google or to Facebook. Their level of database security is going to be much higher, even if you store all your users' information correctly. The downside is losing control of your information storage and your users' potential loss of privacy. We've linked some more technical information about setting up proper hashing algorithms in the video description, and you can check out our website for some sample exercises on how to salt and hash passwords.